Good happy Monday morning, October 21, 2019. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this morning, so let's begin. First up, woman suffers serious injuries after being struck by train in North Conway. Let's take a listen to that video from WR News 9. When family and friends come together on a beautiful day, what better place to be than in your own backyard? A 50-year-old woman is in the hospital tonight after being hit by a train on the scenic railroad in North Conway. Good evening, I'm Mike Cronin. Officials say the woman has serious injuries to her head, torso, and legs. She was taken to Memorial Hospital this afternoon, then airlifted to a different hospital. Railroad officials say the woman was trespassing on the tracks in the wooded area behind the McDonald's. A spokesperson says the engineer blew the horn and flashed his lights, but the woman didn't move. No passengers were hurt. Police are investigating. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at your 2020 New Hampshire candidate tracker for October 21, 2019. We have two candidates today in New Hampshire. The first candidate, Cory Booker. He has two events in New Hampshire today. His first event, join Cory for a meet and greet in Peterborough today at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. The Bagel Mail Cafe and Bakery at 145 Grove Street, Peterborough, New Hampshire, 03458. And his second event, Conversation with Corey at Keene State College, Clock, today at 12.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. at Keene State College. College, 229 Main Street, Keene, New Hampshire, 03435. And the other candidate that will be in New Hampshire today, Joe Seastack. He has two events today in New Hampshire. His first event, town meeting organized by local Democrats in Brooklyn. Line at New Hampshire at 6.30 p.m. And his second event, town meeting organized by local Democrats at Hancock Town Library in Hancock, New Hampshire at 7.30 p.m. Those are the two candidates that will be in New Hampshire today. U.S. features point to slightly higher opens. U.S. stock index features were slightly higher Monday morning. G7 summit will not be held at Trump's resort in Miami, Florida. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Now to a rare reversal from President Trump. The president tweeting the G7 will not be held at the Trump National Doral Resort in the Miami area, a backtrack that followed criticism from lawmakers in both parties. At the same time, acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney doing damage control, denying he admitted a, quote, quid pro quo involving Ukraine, military aid, and the president's political interest. But that denial has done little to quiet critics, and the impeachment inquiry is moving forward. ABC's David Wright is at the White House tonight. Today at the White House, a rare retreat 
Overnight, President Trump tweeted next summer's G7 summit will not be held at his Florida resort after all, blaming media and Democrat crazed and irrational hostility. He was honestly surprised at the level of pushback. Trump himself first proposed hosting foreign leaders at his Doral resort. We have incredible conference rooms, incredible restaurants. It's like, it's like such a natural. Trump promised to host the Doral summit at cost. But Democrats did not take him at his word, quickly signaling their plans to investigate. Foreign leaders and some Republicans expressed reservations, too. At the end of the day, you know, he still considers himself to be a, in the hospitality business. He wanted to put on a show. Today, Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney also sought to backpedal on another issue, admitting something the president has denied for weeks. There was no uh, quid pro quo. There was no quid pro quo. There was no quid pro quo at all. On Thursday, Mulvaney admitted the administration did withhold military aid to Ukraine, Corruption in part to push Ukraine to investigate well. Democrats. Yeah. And which, which ultimately then flowed. But to be clear, what you just described is a quid pro quo. It is funding will not flow unless the investigation into the, into the Democratic server uh, happened as well. We, we, do, we do that all the time with foreign policy. I recognize that, that folks, that, that I didn't speak clearly maybe on Thursday, folks misinterpreted what I said. Today, in his defense, Mulvaney told Fox News he never actually used the words quid pro quo. I never said it was a quid pro quo because there isn't. This week, House impeachment investigators expect to hear from another key witness. Bill Taylor was the top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine after President Trump recalled the ambassador. He's the guy who back in September sent a text message saying that he thought it was crazy to withhold security assistance for help with the political campaign. Taylor expected to testify Tuesday, Tom. David Wright for us at the White House. David, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this morning edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Goodbye, everyone.